Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-green disguise deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And this deck features a lot of the new cards and mechanics introduced in the latest expansion. Disguise is an updated take on the morph mechanic, so we can cast some of our creatures face down as a 2-2 with now a ward 2 as opposed to morph, so that's a bit of upside. And then we can turn them face up at any point by paying their disguise cost. So in the case of the pyrotechnic performer, we can turn it face up for just a single red mana, and then whenever the performer or another creature we control is turned face up, it deals damage equal to its power to each opponent. So that's one of the payoffs for disguising our creatures first. But we can of course also just cast the performer for two mana as a 3-2, which isn't too bad. And this uh, damage can certainly add up, especially if we've got multiple performers on the battlefield, can give us some added reach to try and close out the game. Now, of course, paying 3 mana for a 2-2 in this day and age is not going to fly, so sometimes we can also hide in plain sight instead. A 4 mana sorcery lets us look at the top 5 cards of our library, cloaking 2 of them, and then the rest goes on the bottom. So by cloaking 2 cards, we also get a pair of 2-2s with ward 2, and then we can turn those cards face up, either by paying their disguise cost, if they happen to be disguise creatures, or by paying their mana cost. And sometimes paying the mana cost gives us a very nice discount, as opposed to the disguise cost while still enabling those synergies. Let's say we have a green belt radical that we find of hide in plain sight, then now we can turn it face up for 4 mana as opposed to 7 mana, and then we still get a 4-4 saying when it's turned face up, put a plus on plus one counter on each creature we control, and those creatures also gain a trample until end of turn. So that can be a huge blowout, especially if the opponent doesn't play around the effect. So that's one of the payoffs for hide in plain sight. And then if we turn this face up, we can also deal a ton of damage if we control a pyrotechnic performer. And then another disguised creature in the deck is the Fugitive Codebreaker. Can be played as a 2-mana two 2-1 two with Prowess and Haste, so still totally fine on curve. Or we can disguise it and then turn it face up for 6 mana, although we get a 1 mana discount for each instant and sorcery in our graveyard, so that can also become pretty cheap. And then when it's turned face up, we discard our hand and then draw 3 cards, so that gives us a bit of staying power in those grindier matchups. And then we also have two copies of Yaros, Aurora of the Old Gods, 4 mana, 4-4, four, four, saying other creatures we control have haste, and whenever one or more face-down creatures we control deal a combat damage to a player, draw a card. Now of course a 2-2 two, two isn't super hard to block, but if our opponent tries to take out some of our face-down creatures, then if they're a permanent card, we get to return them to the battlefield face-down, and then turn them face-up, so that can also enable some of our disguise synergies, such as Radical putting plus one counters on the team, or Codebreaker drawing three cards. And then to round out the deck, we've got some removal, play with fire at one mana, and then a Witch Docker Frenzy, which can be important to take out larger creatures, thinking of cards like Shieldred, which can punish the card draw from a Codebreaker otherwise. And then to give us a bit of a mana boost to potentially cast Hide in Plain Sight or Yaros as early as turn 3, we've got 4 copies of the Kassig Naturalist, making red or green when it attacks. And then we also have 2 copies of a Ruby, which can immediately tap for mana, and then can also later attack as a 3-4 if we control a creature with power 4 or greater. And then we also have 4 copies of Kumano, which can potentially beef up some of our 2 mana creatures. Of course we've got quite a few 2 drops, especially if we also count the Performer, even though we're often better off disguising it first, which is why I put it at a 3 mana slot. And then we also have 2 copies of Monstrous Rage, as another instant we can maybe cast after attacking with a Naturalist to punish the opponent for blocking. And it's also nice to have a few more instants to enable Prowess on the Codebreaker and to give it that discount to eventually turn it face up. But again, if we hit a Codebreaker off a Hide in Plain Sight, we can turn it face up for just 2 mana instead of having to pay the regular Disguise cost, which may be more expensive. And then our mana base has two of the red-green creature land, which can also help us close out games. And then uh, plenty more dual lands for mana fixing, and the channel lands providing a bit more utility as well. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a decent hand. Kumano into Naturalist, hopefully turn three hide in plain sight. Opponent on black-green, so likely a mid-range deck. So, can expect them to answer the Naturalist. Hopefully we can get our way up to hide in plain sight. Although now the bat's gonna have a look. They'll have to decide between the removal spell or... Maybe the 2-drop. Takes a 2-drop to disrupt our curve. So now our curve looks a lot less exciting. Let's 
Titania, okay. I'm good against uh, burn decks. So now we could attack with Etching and cast a 3 mana Frenzy. Question is what to take out. At this point I don't care about the bat too much, so I think taking out Titania is fine. Although I'm sure opponent has even better creatures lined up. And then hope for lucky hide and plain sights with a few disguise creatures. If our opponent's playing Titania, they're likely to have the Blossoming Tortoise as well, since the two have good synergy, and it's also quite good with all the creature lands. So that might be next. Just uh, Liliana instead. Okay, gonna plus. Got a few lands to discard, and there's the Tortoise. So I'm kind of surprised they didn't uh, just play it. Step one, send etching at Liliana. And then we can hide in plain sight. And at least one disguise creature. Still hit the Frenzy here, so that if it goes to the graveyard, it will help discount the Codebreaker, so it's better than selecting a land. Put in discards Swamp. And a Dread Knight. Alright, this isn't too bad. So we'll be able to play our land and then turn Codebreaker face up for just two mana to draw three. And now I can play the Performer. Or I can disguise it first, so there's a few options here. If I disguise the Performer, turn it face up for one mana, I won't be able to turn this face up. So I think we just skip that step to have a more mana efficient turn. Liliana's most likely going to uh, make me discard something if they keep it alive. Now thanks to etching we exile the Dread Knight, so it's not coming back. And uh, yeah, turn this face up. Deal two damage and draw three. Not bad. And then Yaros has good synergy with what we have going on. Another Codebreaker can keep the cards flowing. So we're getting to see the deck in kind of a grindier matchup. Now of course if our opponent's got a shield root in play it's going to be quite punishing to a card like Codebreaker. So there's still some potential issues which is why a card like Witchstalker Frenzy is an important answer to Shieldred. For now, just a Sorin and a Radical. Well, Radical will be fun if we can disguise it with haste after playing Yarus, so that we can turn it face up for free, basically. So this is not a permanent, so if it dies with Yarus in play, it doesn't really help me. So maybe we wait a turn and for now just go Naturalists and this guy's Radical. And if I draw land next turn and attack with Naturalist, I would have enough mana to turn this face up. And then for now, I think we just pass, even though they get to activate Sorin. I don't really want to trade my creatures when I'm about to turn Radical face up. Sentinel's fine. And a cut down that that can take out our performer. Or maybe a naturalist. So now we'll miss out on quite a bit of damage from our disguise creatures. And the map reveals go for the throat. So yeah, opponent's turning the corner. They've got the perfect answer to Yaros. So not loving my position. Let's say we... Activate the ridge line. Can pump one of my creatures so we take out Sorin. And still attack past the Sentinel. And then I can play Kumano. Darkness, I return. 
Kuman also would have dealt one to Sorin, but this made sense. Ponon goes all out. So they can punish a double block on Sentinel, could try a triple block. And then hope they don't take out my Radical. Anoint with Affliction the Naturalist. Interesting. I guess they didn't have enough mana to take out Etching and a uh, face down card. So trade happens, we still have our Radical. But it is 7 mana, which we're pretty far from uh, turning face up. But now that go for the throat's gone, I can finally draw with Yaris. So let's do that. Enters with a plus one counter. Question is what to do with a code breaker. Might be worth it to just cast for two. Although let's see, one, two, three. So cost me three mana to turn face up. I think we still just attack and then see what we pick up. All right, perfect, Naturalists. So next turn, if we attack with Naturalist, we have seven mana, can turn this face up. It is nighttime, and Boseju I could channel for one mana to take out a creature land as well, but then we uh, wouldn't have enough mana to turn face up. So, very interesting spot. If I turn face up, how much damage are we talking about here? So this is going to be 5, plus 6 is 11, plus another 7 is 18. So we're close to presenting lethal, but we also have to be mindful of an attack back from the creature lands. So I think I just go with this guy's codebreaker. Keep up Boseju for a creature land. And then probably keep etching back as well as an extra blocker. Alright, so Cottage animated. Channel. And then we could wait for the trigger from Yaris to draw cards to go on the stack and then transform our Codebreaker. Which is why I want to go full control here. Foundry gonna get busy as well. Alright, that we don't mind, so that's gonna trade and then enter the battlefield and trigger. And I could technically draw a uh, play with fire as well. I guess, yeah, this triggers first, never mind. So we do get the code breaker back, discard draw three, and then we draw all four phase down cards. So I don't even have to discard whatever I draw. Okay. Perfect. And then second main, I still haven't played land for turn. So I can still hide in plain sight. All right, if our opponent can put another plus one count on one of their creatures, we're in trouble. Once again, select uh, instants and sorceries for codebreaker purposes. We're also dead to a trespasser draining us for one, or a shieldred, so... This is not looking good. If that last card can deal one damage, we're dead. All right, we get to untap, and I have to imagine we can figure out lethal here. We have 11 plus another 7 is 18. We've got a Monstrous Rage. We've got a Creature Land and a Code Breaker. We can disguise, turn face up. So maybe start there. And then, uh, yeah, go for Monstrous Rage over here.
What I also could have done is turn this face up in response to the trigger, cast a monstrous rage to pick up an extra prowess. So there's just a million options here. But uh, let's do this now for one mana. And then still maybe draw something relevant. Haven't played land for turn yet. Alright. So get in there. Boseju, my enchantment. Okay. So activating the creature land would not have worked out all that well. And then I don't think we can do anything with our remaining mana. And that's just enough for lethal. Wow, what a grind fest here against Golgari midrange. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw here with what looks like a keepable hand. Turn on Phoenix Chick. We've got to play with fire at the ready. And we'll see if we need to take out any 2-drop. Of course, Felden, not the ideal creature to play with fire. I think I'm still going to go for it since it's not going to get any better for us. All our creatures have 2 toughness. But our opponent now finds Squee that they can cast next turn. So we're already on the back foot. Opponent instead going for Phoenix Chick. Possible they don't have a third land. So there's a second Phoenix Chick. Could maybe see removal on Naturalist. Kumano. Gonna deal one instead. So they likely have some 3 drops in hand. Okay, now I get to attack with Naturalists, and then with the extra mana, maybe Disguise Performer play Kumano. That looks okay. And then next turn, our second Naturalist will pick up a plus one counter. And this is going to be harder for them to remove, thanks to Ward. Triple Phoenix Jake, Swiss Spear. So an attack for five. Okay, so now I will be able to use Frenzy in the opponent's turn for one mana if they attack all out. So that's good to keep in mind. Here I could, of course, attack with both creatures, use the mana from Naturalist to transform Performer. So this essentially deals 6 damage by itself, plus 2 is 8. Opponent falls to 9, play another Naturalist, keep up Frenzy. Yeah, I think that's a fine sequence here. And since we can turn our Disguise creature face up at instant speed, we can use that floating mana. And then hopefully we can block, bait out a pump spell, and then punish with a one mana frenzy. Which they may not be expecting. Right, Aligning Strike deals with Naturalist. So now we're only threatening 7 damage on the way back. And let's deal with this with Spear. Top decking another performer would be awesome since we can disguise, turn face up and deal 6 damage. Hide in plain sight isn't bad either. Although if our opponent's got another lightning strike, we are just uh, dead here. Didn't draw land for the ridge line, which also could have helped. So, yeah, I guess um, we want to attack, hide in plain sight, and then hope to flip another performer, pretty much. I guess I would do it with the mana from Naturalist, but uh, we did not hit one. Let's 
May as well attack. So yeah, if we hit a, another performer with a hide in plain sight, we turn it face up here, and then both performers would trigger, dealing 6 damage. And that would have done it. Now we're probably going to lose to a Monstrous Rage or Lightning Strike. Phoenix Chick can only attack. And Lightning Strike will do it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, not a huge fan of this opening hand, but Hide in Plain Sight is one of our better cards, and at least we've got something we can do early with Play with Fire. We're pretty likely to draw some two mana creature we can play or something we can disguise. So I'll give it a shot. And a visitor. I think is worth taking out, even though something like a naturalist could be a bigger threat next turn. Performer, I'll just cast for two. No basic land yet for ossification is important to note. And there's naturalist. Alright, now we could attack and frenzy. And then next turn hide in plain sight. If we hit two creatures, we can eventually turn them face up and deal a lot of damage with the performer. Tokasia's welcome is fine. Could blow it up, but I would much rather hide in plain sight. And we hit Radical, so that's exciting. Now we can turn it face up for four mana, as opposed to its typical seven mana disguise. Thanks to the cloak mechanic, we just pay the creature's mana cost instead, if it's more convenient. Hallowed Haunting is fine. Okay. So do one of these. And then in response to the trigger, I also want to Monstrous Rage, so our performer deals more damage. And attack. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is fine. Turn to Naturalist if it can attack, sets up turn 3 Yaris. Seem to be up against a red aggro once again. That deck's not going anywhere, if you were wondering. Now we could go Ruby plus play with fire which maybe uses our mana a little bit more efficiently. Swiss Spear, so... I can block if they enable Prowess. We play with Fire and Response. So we only take one now. But I wouldn't be able to play Yaris on turn 3. Can play it next turn, so I think playing the disguise creature now makes sense, so we can maybe draw a card next turn. And at least a 4-4 four four is a little harder for them to take out. So now we get to draw a card. Since we hit him with a disguise creature, performer's not bad. And a Raiju. Your opponent's hand seemed a little on the pricey side since it didn't have a 3-drop, although Raiju on defense is not where you want to be. Now we could Disguise Performer, attack all out, and if they turn face up that's fine. Opponents at 6, and we get to draw. Adversary, they could pay the extra mana to play with fire, take out Performer, but they need to leave something back on defense, 
And we've got more hasty creatures coming up. Alright, a few ways we can do this. Attack call out. Make some mana. And our opponent still takes 6 damage. So I didn't get to see the ability of uh, turning our downed disguise creatures face up, but that can also be very nice if our opponent tries to take out our disguise creatures, we still get to turn them face up and maybe enable certain abilities like the Codebreaker or the Radical, which is even better. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and uh, yeah, our hand seems keepable. Sadly, don't have the red untapped on turn one. But we can go Ruby plus Kumano on turn two. And then maybe we'll end up disguising the Code Breaker. Let's see what our opponent's up to. Planes. So looking like blue white maybe soldiers performers not a bad pickup so i can disguise that pick up an extra counter and then instead of attacking into what could be a reinforcement so we can just turn the performer face up or play with fire something opponent had nothing also possible they're more of a control deck, after all. And there is a new 2-mana counter spell for blue-white. Which is certainly going to see some play. So deal 4 damage now with the performer, thanks to Kumano. And at 4 power it also enables Ruby to get the bonus. So I don't want to overextend too much, but uh, yeah, it is tempting with double Codebreaker, just play them and smash, or I can play one of them and then play with fire for the scry. Still want to play my Elaine to enable the ridge line eventually. Could also, I guess, activate it now with Ruby, but doesn't seem productive when Ruby will attack as a three-powered creature to begin with. Smite takes out our Performer, but Ruby will still get the plus two plus two bonus. And then do we want another play with Fire? It's not bad here, can give us another discount on the Codebreaker if we decide to disguise it, or we can just go face and enable Prowess a bunch. Alright, depopulates, a nice 4-mana answer, but at least we get to draw a card of Ruby. And then we could end of turn play with Fire, if we hit a land, it enables Ridge Line and we win. Or we can just cast a Codebreaker next turn, play with Fire, and that guarantees us to win without needing to draw land. Even though it would have been fun to uh, disguise Codebreaker and draw 3 cards. Alright, so nice quick start, good enough to beat Blue-White Control. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand seems fine. Ideally, we can curve Naturalist into a turn 3 Yaris. But on the draw, that might be a little tricky. Opponent starts with Kumano. So we're gonna be on the receiving end here. Performer might be the better turn to play if we need to trade it off. And a Picnic Ruiner is quite scary, especially with an extra counter on it. Yeah, I think we're just going for Naturalist. Opponents playing the Pump Spell deck, so they're less likely to have removal, more likely to have Pump Spells. So blocking is unlikely to work out for us. But we might be able to sneak in an attack and cast Yaris, although that's unlikely to be good enough. Since a runer can easily ruin our day here. Already getting in for 12 damage, essentially. So I'm just gonna take it, but we're probably dead. Nice turn 3 kill. 
Yeah, that's already lethal, but opponents got even more. So, even if we had a play with Fire in hand, it wouldn't have worked since Ruiner entered with a plus one counter. So just not much we could do here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and sadly a one lander that I'm gonna have to mulligan. This is not great, but I'll keep it. Put a radical on the bottom. Also means our hide in plain sight is gonna be a little bit less exciting since we're less likely to find a radical in the top cards. Our opponent on soldiers. More likely to be mono white if they start with the planes, but could be blue white as well. Now I could just cast a radical for four mana. Now Yaros is a bit more appealing. So we'll attack and then use a mana from Naturalist to cast a Yaros. And then I'm kind of looking forward to sending a disguised radical into Thalia and turn it face up for free. A Lunar Veterans next. And a Vanguard. So Naturalist no longer wants to tank into Thalia. So we'll just send this Radical. If they take it, we get to draw a card. So they are likely to block. And now we get to add counters to the team. Alright, so next turn we should be able to set up a decent attack. Hope to top deck something relevant. So that's the power of Yaris. Especially alongside Radical. Alright, opponent's playing red as well for Inti. And our opponent explodes, they're too far behind. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. Kumano into maybe a turn two Codebreaker. And then Performer we can disguise to get some extra damage in the future. Could also opt to play Performer on two and then disguise Codebreaker to eventually draw three. Although that's going to take a while. Only have the one instant in hand. So I think I prefer turn two Codebreaker attack for three right away. And then hopefully we'll find some of our curve toppers. Hide in plain sight also enables prowess. Alright, opponent on the pump spell deck once again. Although this time we're on the play. And thanks to etching of Kumano, we can exile this camp so it doesn't deal damage on the way out, so that's relevant. So, that being said, I think we just attack all out and then accept the trades Codebreaker for Scamp, basically. Although we could also enable Prowess. So yeah, I could attack and then Frenzy the Scamp. There's a chance our opponent's got a pump spell, but if it's Giant Growth it's still only plus three. So it would be relatively safe to Frenzy here. Now let's just attack and then uh, Disguise Performer. Let the trade happen. And if our opponent goes for a pump spell, we can respond. In hindsight, playing Ruby and then attacking would have been a bit more mana efficient. Since then I would have had a Ruby in play. But this works. Got a nice two for one. And if it weren't for etching, they still would have been able to deal two on the way out with this camp. But, uh, yeah, Kumano remains one of the best red cards in Standard. Next is Swift Spear, and our opponent's going to play defense. So this is kind of where we can leverage our Performer to burn the opponent out without needing to attack into a potential trick. I'm just going to play Ruby Disguise Performer. And hope to find more Disguise creatures. 
since I don't think an attack is going to work out well for me. Alright, opponent's going to Monstrous Rage end of turn, just to use up their mana. Carpalus and Forest also not doing them any favors. And now a Thrain Portal, another Pain Land. And a Picnic Ruiner. Points at 8. One mana left. Which could also enable Prowess. Ooh, perfect. Hide in plain sight. Exactly what we wanted. So, play that. And then if we hit a couple creatures, we can burn them out with the Performer. And a Radical's awesome, so is Codebreaker. Okay, so... I don't think I should attack here into another pump spell. We'll just pass. Even though Ruby does get plus two plus two if Codebreaker lives. So it wouldn't be a horrible attack, but I kind of just want to show off Performer burning the opponent out, or we could turn Radical face up for four mana. And at 19 with a ton of toughness here, we should be safe. All right, opponent with an Audacity on the Picnic Ruiner. Two cards in hand. Yeah, they might get aggressive here. Opponent goes all out, in fact. Alright. This is what I wanted to avoid, but uh, now I have to line up some blocks since they could easily kill me otherwise. So we can still turn Performer face up. And then a Radical is the card we don't want to lose if possible. So let's assume our opponent's got two more plus three power effects. Then this would deal 20 damage by itself, so I do have to put something in front. So let's say we do one of these. And got a block Swiss Spear. This one at least doesn't trample, although Monstrous Rage could change it, but I'm not too concerned. And then, uh, yeah, let's say we put the Codebreaker in front. That should be enough here. I guess we do take one more Trample here. So I guess, yeah, to be safe I should put one more Blocker in front. So we'll make it Ruby. And then before damage turn the Performer face up. So there's Monstrous Rage. Bones at three. That to the Performer attacking, but we also have this uh, nifty Radical at the ready. And our opponent explodes, so next turn we would pay four mana, turn Radical face up. And if we stack the triggers correctly, we get the plus one counter before Performer resolves, so we would deal five damage as opposed to four. And then we've got a healthy attack lined up as well. Alright, so we got to see our red-green Disguise deck in action. And yeah, Disguise is gonna have a hard time breaking through in the current standard format since the power level is so high. And at the end of the day, we're still paying three mana for a 2-2, which is gonna be a little slow against most matchups. But it does have some cool synergies at least, and I think this is still one of the best places where you can play cards like Hide and Plain Sights and Yaris and get the most out of them. But I certainly would not recommend crafting the deck since it's not going to be particularly competitive. So the best way to play this is maybe to play a bit of Limited and pick up those cards and then you might have some of the standard cards already and then uh, take it from there. But I would not recommend this as your first deck to try out standard. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.